when you talk about your architecture, you use such words as uh, and phrases as uh, research, innovation, daring, performative, robotics, fearless, creases and folds, very three-dimensional, hybrids, precise fit, deep structure, embrace complexity, advanced geometry, synthetic nature, which you mentioned a few times this time, uh, simple gestures, topological uh, deformations, the idea of temporality, temporality, an intelligent game collapsing the artistic with the scientific, thinking big, and living on the edge of existing. How else would you describe your work and what kind of architecture do you try to achieve? That's a lot of words, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, uh, a lot of these words come back to maybe a simple um, aim I have is where I try, first of all, I see a building because I'm thinking in components. I see a building as three-dimensional. The bottom is as important as the sides and the top. Um, so theoretically, you know, the roof could be the same as a facade or especially in, in the Asian games, right? A roof is actually in a weird way. What is that? It's like a park. So then the facades turn into something else and it's a very strange upside down situation. But in a city, it's very different, obviously. You know, if, if you build in a city, you have a tight site. You have buildings next to you that you react to. So I think in a building, the the idea of 3Dness is absolutely valid. Um, but you, you, you think of that in a different way. Uh, like 497 Greenwich, where I folded the glass, was very much to kind of play around with building codes and I got irritated by the fact that we had to give so much back to the city for light and air and then of course light and air is very logical so you have to kind of do it even you know you have you you convince yourself you have to do it so I, I started like inflecting angles uh, of the setback uh, code onto each other into this kind of rippled facade but really, because what happens is if you do that, then sometimes an apartment will have a facade like that comes kind of up like this and you look under an angle down on the street. But that also reflects very beautifully the lights at night from the street. So you get little stripes of a car that comes by that kind of travels through your glass or the people who have a facade that goes this way suddenly see the sky and have rain and uh, things on their uh, facade that is very different than when it's totally flat, right? So you experience your environment, you're in, you're projected in a way in the city, in this glass fold. Um, so I always try to think of um, maybe what we as humans need, like how a building could be more organic so that we have a, a closer relationship with, with that building. Uh, whether it's a residential building like the translucent stone or the folded glass that that challenge you and, and like challenge you to think about the city or the environment differently, or in the Asian games where we try and like really merge with nature and create a synthetic nature that incorporate us, but then we would we still leave nature as natural as we can to kind of recreate that kind of super nature feeling while you really inhabit it, right? You're like inhabiting in a big way. So um, yeah, and I think that, that that contradiction to me is actually what I usually look for. I look for something that is um, merging things in more complex ways to kind of give a, another kind of experience as a human and to liberate us from these straight boxes we are stuffed into that really look like prison cells. So when I design something, I try and add a humanness to the building. What I said, like you, buildings are like organic bodies. If you design them well, they hopefully ventilate, they, they get hot, they sweat, they whatever. But if you deal with that behavior, you can make a, a climate that's much better for us because we don't do very well with dry air that is created by central heating systems or 
other systems. So we actually do need humidity and we do need natural ventilation.